It's going to be a tricky one. Don't wait, guys, honestly. Yeah, yeah, because I could be here for ages trying to get off. Strong, strong win. <laughs> no worries, eh? Give us a lift to Shepton. Lovely. <laughs> right, I'll see you later, kids. Cool. Have fun. Thanks, John. I really appreciate it, mate. As soon as you're in the car, I'll be off. <laughs> Two, two, two. Okay, more stressful launches. That was just really windy. 12 gusting 17 according to Windy. I'm on route for checkpoint four. I've got two hours in the air. I've got 12 litres in my tank. That should do me three and a bit at least. I still have to land at checkpoint four to get this uh, key ring and then take off again. Tiny little landing site by all accounts. I've got no problems with uh, just chipping off and going to the finish at any point, uh, but it would be nice to complete it. Yeah, it's been difficult, it's been headwinds all the way. It's been difficult fields to launch and land out of. It's been fields that are now housing estates. But on the plus side, it's uh, fields of crops that are now lo lovely flat rugby pitches. With little old farm buildings to hide behind at night. So that was my friend back there on the ground, John Dent, he's a wedding photographer. He was in Northampton about 20 minutes from me, but he moved down here about a year ago. And uh, the, the course went right over his house, well like the house two doors down from him, so... He uh, took me to petrol station, filled up a jerry can, we bought a funnel, uh, stuck 10 litres in, took me to his house, gave me a coffee. He's a good lad. Thank, if you're watching this, thank you, John. That was really appreciated. That would have been a horrible walk with a motor on my back. Even that five or six hundred yards to the uh, to the petrol station there. So thank you, and I will uh, thank you for the power bank as well. I will have Amazon deliver you a brand new one. I've got my jumper on now. I didn't put my thermals on because I didn't want to strip off in front of John's kids. I'm getting 26 miles an hour. It's gone down to one, one hour 42. That's good news. 
The wind is fairly strong from that direction. I better just check we're actually rolling and I'm not just talking to myself. Looks like it to me. And that was some seriously shitty air in that launch lot. I think due to the big hill, uh, just, uh, well, it's basically the shore, the cliffs. There's a cliff and then a little dip down into the town. John said to me, yeah, we do get the wind here. It's like, yeah, you live in a rotor spot. Every time we um, land or take off or whatever, we have to let HQ know what our plans are, why we've landed, etc, etc. Carlos is keeping an eye on us all. They've got a big screen back at HQ with the dots on. I wonder if anybody's watching it. It's gone down to 1 hour 30 now. That'll do me. Half 5, half 6, 7. I'll miss the prize giving. Oh, well, let's see how far it is to finish. No, I'll miss the prize giving, I don't mind. Save me some beers. If I stay at 2,000 feet, it's bumpy as hell, but I get 30 miles an hour. So, I'm going to put up with the bumps. But by God, it's bumpy. One hour 12 to go, I've got enough fuel for three hours. That's me in and out. As long as I can land and take off okay at the checkpoint, I don't care if I tumble through the pylons on fire. At least I'll have done it. I think I can see Glastonbury Tour right out there on the horizon. You can't, probably, but it's directly ahead. Like a nipple. I think that's what that is. I don't know if these bumps that I'm feeling is thermals or still crap coming off those cliffs back there. That air must just slam into those cliffs. Ooh. Okay, this is Sherbul one below me. I've got 18 miles to go to the checkpoint, 37 minutes. I'm getting 30 miles an hour or better now and again. 32, 33, 34. That's the most that can be hoped for. It is bloody bumpy. And it's cold. Notes for the next one. Dry pair of socks. Uh, mirror on the bag. Oh, and there was another thing. Can't remember what it was. Oh. He caught me unawares. They had a little wave. Just thinking about all those takeoffs and uh, how grateful I am that I live in a place with no contour lines at all. Just a flat place. I see a little airstrip there, but I've got no airspace shown on here at all. Very strange. Yeah, plane lining up to take off. He's up. He's turned away from me. Okay, last checkpoint, three miles away. Six minutes. Oh, I'd be glad to be done with this now. This has been a bumpy, bumpy leg. Like Rapper 40 bumpy. A big bump and then you look at it and it's like and it feels warmer when you when you're going up it's 1700 feet now just trying to find the field 2.8 miles that is a wedding no doubt nice marquee Looks a bit like a dick. Nice. I have no idea what I'm looking for here. Something is not right. Ah, 
Ah, <laughs> that little square down there. Okay. Oh, one more takeoff. Short takeoff, isn't it? Jesus. Mako board, ozone keyring. Oh. Eighteen miles. Well, go for the old diagonal then. Please let this go all right. Please, 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 please. This is Parajet's field apparently. Ship field. Uh, look at that. Really windy reverses. Nil wind forwards. a bit of a breeze. It's quite a heavy sock I think. Ugh, what is this? What is this place? This is going to be a case of uh, give it all you got. Clear prop! Unsure if I can hear a rattle or not. Yeah, I can definitely hear something I shouldn't. Okay, 16 miles, 28 minutes. Let's just get this done. I'm going to miss the uh, prize giving by half an hour. Never mind. I'll have completed it. It's been difficult, it's been challenging. Take off, take off fields, landing, strange places, going to places and finding nowhere to land and having to carry on to the next one. That says crosswind. Uh, here's a nice bit of countryside. 
it's all surrounded by these trees. Cheers, sir. GoPro died 10 minutes ago. <laughs> hey, well done, man. Thank you. Awesome job. That was Congratulations. That was challenging. Let me help you now. Thank you. Uh. Woo! <laughs> well done, man. What position did you get? Five. Not bad. Alex smashed it, eh? Yeah. I can't do it. Thank you. No problem. Well done, mate. Ooh. Everyone was rooting for you. <laughs> that was <laughs> challenging, that was. Whew. Do you mean that was easy or? No. Oh. No. Bumpy? Was, I was, yeah, that last leg from uh, Axminster to checkpoint four was Ooh. rough as <laughs> That means rough. Rough. Yeah. Rough as a badger. <laughs> but I was, I was stuck at that, at that. Us. We was waiting at nine o'clock for you. Where have you been? Tottenham's Cross. Yeah. For like three and a half, four hours. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> ah, see, you next, see you next week. Cheers. <laughs> We've got yeah. to cut it in half now. That's yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> in third, in yeah. third. Come on, come on. Oh, hang on. Have I got to come in? Yeah, yeah. Come on, Dickie. I'm joining him here. We feel like we're going to start working. So that was that. I don't know what time I finished. They uh, they waited for me for the presentations. There was still food and drink left over, which was nice. I think it was after the official end though and I was the only one in my class to finish so get in there it was challenging uh, I'd definitely do it again I don't know how I would have done last year when I signed up but it would have been an adventure and that's the whole idea of, the th of that that's the whole idea of everything the adventurous do to tell the truth hence the name and uh, oh a deer squirrel I can only imagine what the Icarus trophy proper is like doing that for like five days over thousands of miles so there were 25 or 26 of us this year which I think is the most they've had and uh, there's room for more they tell me so I'd encourage anyone to do it uh, no matter what level you're at there were some really inexperienced people there uh, I think Tim Priest said to me if he'd have completed the course it would have basically doubled his flying hours so get on to the adventurous if you're interested link below keep an eye on their website I've got a quick giveaway, this t-shirt from the Adventurous, I managed to blag another one. It's in medium, so consider that before you put your name down. If you want to comment down below, like, share, etc, but uh, leave a comment and then I'll randomly pick one and I'll send you the Adventurous t-shirt. Let me just show you the back. I'll send you the t-shirt and I'll chuck in some Paranoob stuff as well. So as you might have heard, we lost a pilot on that race. A guy called Jules Eaton. I hadn't met him previously, although he's well known in his area. Uh, I think I met him for like just a quick chat at the start line before it all kicked off. Uh, by all accounts, he was an experienced pilot flying for a number of years, safety officer at his local paramotor club. 
uh, XRAF. A very determined guy as well, the guys are saying. Uh, and I know that his final flight, he had 17 failed launches before he got in the air, because conditions were, it was an exceptionally thermic day. But that's a mark of how determined he was, and that's what people have said. So there is an investigation going on uh, with the, the BHPA, the CAA, I guess, I don't know. Uh, so we wait to hear from that. Everybody, all paramotor pilots want to know what the cause was when somebody loses their life like that. I've already seen some rumours on Facebook that were wrong as far as, well, definitely wrong. The answers will come out in time and it's just a case of waiting for it. But he was flying with Andy Bex and if you go watch Andy's video or see Andy's statement, it's very clear that Jules was loving it. Uh, it's clear from his updates in the pilot's WhatsApp group that he was loving it. And as his wife has reportedly said, he died doing something he loved. You know, if we're all going to die and if you can say that, or if someone can say that about you, then, you know, that's probably one of the better things you can hope for. So I've not been in paramotor in very long, just over a year, I guess. But it, it appears to me that the people who lose their life doing this sport are the ones who are doing things we don't normally do. So flying over water, apparently water is the number one killer of paramotorists. Flying over water, we don't normally do that. Not without flotation at least and chase boats at most. Uh, the people that do that acro, spinning around the pylons, low to the ground. If anything goes wrong there, they haven't got any time, they're going really fast, they're really low. Those people get hurt or die. Oh, another one is, um, you know, not concentrating or being aware. That's like a error thing. I think there was uh, a bad accident fairly recently where two paramotors hit each other in the sky. Uh, one guy died and the other one severely injured. I don't know those people. That's just what I heard. And the other one that stands out is flying in conditions that you wouldn't normally fly in, that are not good for flying. You know, with more experience, you can fly in rougher conditions, but I'm not convinced it's any nicer. I've been in some rough stuff. Uh, and there's guys, there's guys who, who'd fly in anything. Guys who like to just go flying and you'd look up and go, not a chance, I'm going to the pub. And those are the people, it's the people pushing it and taking the risks. As far as I can work out, they're the ones that lose their life. Unless there was a reason to fly in that, there's no reason to fly in that. I remember saying that to myself on the Rafa 40. And you know, if you decide that finishing the course or competing in the race is reason enough, then you make your decisions and you go with it. And I know straight after it, a few of the other guys were thinking about whether they'd just give up flying or whatever, but I'm fairly sure uh, when I say that Jules wouldn't have wanted anyone to do that. He was loving it. So anyway, <clears throat> it's Thursday. Uh, Paramotorclub.org, their summer flying starts tomorrow. So I'll be off first thing. Next week's video will be some footage from there. I'll try and get more into the flying than I, than I have done at the last two or three. Uh, probably less flying and more fly in in that one. It's also Parafest, so anyone who's going there, have a great time. Looking forward to some vlogs because I haven't been able to get to that one yet. And then straight after the flying this weekend, my wing's off up to Aerofix to have uh, stickers applied. So I'll be grounded for a while. So I might as well take that opportunity to get my engine up to Bailey and get it, you know, torn down and cleaned out and fixed and looked after for once. Yeah, in that time, I've got some Rafa 40 footage that I need to work on before it all gets too old. There's probably about six videos in total coming out there. So watch out for those. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you next week. Have a good one.